Okay, how about that, Rachmaninoff? <laughs> so we've talked about Rachmaninoff before. Rachmaninoff, you know, was kind of disdained by some. He's kind of the Barry Manilow of <laughs> classical music. See? Classic Encounter is a way for the CSO to welcome a new audience to the music. They're curious about music, expanding their musical horizons, so it's just perfect for them. Audiences seem to really respond to be coming together in community, and you know, we laugh a little. Sometimes we laugh a lot. This is um, Rachmaninoff, and this is where in <laughs> this is where we in classical music we get the is it term edible. Oh, it's not white chocolate, I thought. <laughs> Together they have come to discover music that maybe didn't belong to them at one point in their lives, but now they really embrace and look forward to. I think it's provided life to the symphony. It's given meaning to the symphony. Um, otherwise, somebody like myself, who is not uh, well-versed in classical music, would never know uh, what I'm really listening to and where it came from. Okay, that's what you're going to hear in the third movement. Doesn't that sound like you could just get up and start dancing if you knew how to Hungarian dance? You could do something. Well, they called and said, you want to do this? And I said, yeah, because I've always been a fan of classical music. I love classical music. I love music. I'm a music educator. Did I think it would go on for 10 years? Of course, I hoped it would. But there was a moment where I didn't know if we would get to the second performance. It was pretty uh, groundbreaking. From the beginning, we knew we had a chemistry. We could play off of each other and our common passion for music got us through. And I think it communicated to the audience that was there. Martha comes in and gives them a music theory concept to wrap their mind around, plays some examples, and, and we have what we call a classic encounter moment where the member of the audience, all of a sudden, all that stuff Martha said makes sense because they hear it in the context of the, the piece. And they're supposed to very quietly kind of nod their head and kind of go, ah, oh, now I get it. So tonight, when you come out of the Brahms Concerto and have intermission, I want you to say loud enough for everybody to hear, ah, oh, I love the Joachim Cadenza. <laughs> okay? It rocks. Joachim. Thank you, Martha. I feel smarter already. There you go. <laughs> well, they're very funny, and Terry always has a couple of Beatles references, which is really fun, and um, they just play off of each other really well. One of the things that really struck me is here's Paul McCartney all these years later at Red Square. He's singing Let It Be, and these people are... It's the first time they've ever seen a Beatle, and they have tears going down their cheeks, and they're singing along with all the lyrics. These are people who do not speak English, and it just shows how essential music and the arts are to the Russian people. Let it be. here and listening to the lecture and seeing how the music relates to the composers' lives and their time, their political environment and history, it just makes the music come alive and it just seems so much more relevant to me. Music's not in a vacuum. And we put classical music in a context like that, I think it becomes more real. And then we step back and let the CSO do their magic and the audience keeps coming back. Yeah.